Exercise 4. On March 1, 2011, Eckerd and Kelly formed a partnership. Eckerd contributed $97,000 in cash, and Kelly contributed land valued at $77,600 and a building valued at $107,600. The partnership also assumed responsibility for Kelly's $87,000 long-term note payable associated with the land in the building. The partners agree to share income as follows. Eckerd is to receive an annual salary allowance of $29,000. Both are to receive an annual interest allowance of 11% of their beginning year capital investment, and any remaining income or loss is to be shared equally. On October 20, 2011, Eckerd withdrew $31,000 in cash, and Kelly withdrew $24,000 in cash. After the adjusting and closing entries are made to the revenue and expense accounts at December 31, 2011, the income summary account had a credit balance of $88,000, and were asked to prepare the journal entries to record the following. The partner's initial capital investments. And while we could make two separate journal entries, let's just combine Eckerd and Kelly's investments into a single entry. On March 1st, Eckerd contributed $97,000 in cash, debit cash, and credit Eckerd's capital. Kelly contributed land with a value of $77,600 and a building valued at $107,600. But these assets were not free and clear, as Kelly also has a long-term note payable associated with the land in the building. The partnership is going to assume responsibility for this debt. So to add the debt to the books, we credit the long-term note payable for $87,000. So the value of Kelly's investment is $98,200. The land plus the building minus the long-term note payable. We're also asked to prepare journal entries to record their cash withdrawals. On October 20th, we debit Eckerd's withdrawal account for $31,000, debit Kelly's withdrawal account $24,000, and credit cash for the total, 55000 Letter C asks us to prepare the closing of both the withdrawal account and income summary accounts. Closing the withdrawal accounts is easy. To close the debit balance in Eckerd's withdrawal account, we credit the withdrawal account and debit Eckerd capital. To close the debit balance in Kelly's withdrawal account, we credit Kelly's withdrawal account and debit Kelly's capital. The final step is to allocate net income. Close the income summary account to the partner's capital accounts. The fact that income summary has a credit balance means that the company had net income. Income summary is an owner's equity account. A credit increases equity, so we know it's net income. Had this been a sole proprietorship, the closing entry would be simple. We would debit income summary and credit the sole proprietor's capital account and we're going to be replicating this journal entry in a partnership environment. To close income summary, we need to debit income summary and credit total partnership capital. Before we close income summary, we need to allocate the income. We begin with net income, $88,000, and then we subtract the allowances, the salary allowances, and the interest allowances. There's a $29,000 salary allowance to Eckerd, and nothing to Kelly. The interest allowance is 11% of their beginning of the year capital investment. Eckerd's capital investment began at $97,000. 11% of $97,000 is $10,670. Kelly's net investment was $98,200. The land plus the building minus the long-term note. 11% of $98,200 is $10,802. So we have total allowances, $39,670 for Eckerd and $10,802 for Kelly. The total of the allowances is $50,472. When we subtract the allowances from net income, the balance is $37,528. This remainder is to be shared equally. $37,528 divided by 2 is $18,764. 18,764 for Eckerd and the same for Kelly. Once the remainder has been shared equally, there is no balance of income.
the income of each partner for Eckerd 58,434 the total allowances of 39,670 plus the remainder of the income 18,764 Kelly's share of income is the $10,802 of the allowances plus the $18,764 excess for a total of 29,566 the journal entry to close income summary is a debit to income summary for net income $88,000, a credit to Eckerd's capital account for $58,434, and a credit to Kelly's capital account $29,566. The next step is to determine the balance in the partner's capital accounts as of December 31, 2011. Eckerd's initial capital investment was $97,000. Kelly's investment was $98,200. Our partners withdrew $31,000 and $24,000. Eckerd's share of income $58,434 and Kelly's share of income was $29,566. The ending balance in Eckerd's capital account is $124,434 and Kelly is $103,766.